Welcome to another episode of the Nourishing Africa podcast. As you may be aware, the World Milk Day is held on the 1st of June every year. And in commemoration of this day, we'll be discussing the untapped opportunities in Africa day reproduction on this episode of the Nourishing Africa podcast. Milk is no doubt an important global food, but in Africa, the dairy sector is still largely operated through traditional systems. Despite Africa's ownership of about 10% of the world's cow's populations, the continent barely contributes up to 3% of the global milk production. As a result, the continent is barely able to meet the local demand for dairy and its products and spends millions of dollars on milk importation each year. These are the issues that we need to tackle immediately. So how can we close the huge demand and supply gap in the African dairy sector? How can African entrepreneurs build a sustainable dairy sector that can sufficiently nourish the continent while still having enough for exports? Well, these are some of the conversations we'll be having today with our guest, Fisayo Kayodi, who is a professional livestock expert and works with dairy farmers in improving the dairy sector. Welcome to the Nourishing Africa podcast, Fisaya. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Kindly introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your background and what you do. All right. As you've mentioned, I am Fisayo and I am a trained animal scientist. I have a first degree in animal science. And for the past five years, I've been working on building sustainable livestock production systems in Africa. More specifically, I've worked on the Nigerian Dairy Development Program that was implemented by Sahel Consulting, where I developed training content for um, smallholder farmers on improved dairy farming practices, established further land for feed, to have increased access to feed for their cattle, and the success of that project translated into a bigger one called the Advancing Local Dairy Development in Nigeria. And this particular project is going to be running for five years, and we are currently in the second year. Primarily, this project aims to catalyze a vibrant local dairy value chain in Nigeria through partnerships with public and private sectors, dairy processors, as well as smallholder dairy farmers. And we are providing them with capacity building, resources, access to finance, as well as um, access to infrastructure to improve their livelihoods, the productivity of their cattle, as well as empower women and the communities in which they live. So on the Aldin project, I support strategy development. I um, part of the core implementation team and lead the training and extension components where we are um, advocating for behavioral change of smallholder dairy farmers and support the delivery of animal health services as well as genetic improvements for the cattle belonging to the target beneficiaries who are dairy farmers. Thank you so much, Isaiah, for that brief introduction. Based on your work with the Aldin project, you have a lot of experience working with dairy farmers in the dairy sector. Now, really, what can you say has been their biggest challenges as key value chain actors in the African dairy sector? Well, as someone that has been working in the livestock space for a while now, it is very difficult for me to point out one big challenge that dairy farmers are facing in the sector. So there are a lot of challenges, but the primary challenge, which is caused by a whole lot of other challenges, is low milk production. So there's high rates of low milk productivity from the local cows in which they build. I think I'm going to set more context around this. So in the Nigerian dairy sector, we have the fourth largest population of cattle in Africa, but our production is very low compared to other African countries. And this is because 90% of the dairy animals reared in Nigeria is controlled by the pastoralists who are popularly known for migrating from one place to another in search of feed, water, and other resources for the survival of their cows. This affects the productivity because the cattle do not have access to improved 
extension services, animal health care, breeding services, as well as drugs and vaccines to keep their animals healthy for efficient production. Um, the biggest issue here, again, is that they do not have access to good quality feed. So even when we see them moving from one location to another in search of feed, they primarily use whatever they fed on as energy to trek to the next place where they will be feeding for another energy that they are going to be acquiring to trek. So it's like a round cycle where they just go within the circle and there's no improvement because they are largely fragmented from our dairy sector. Thank you so much, Visaya, for that. In the introduction to this podcast, we said, although we have a large population of cows in Africa, the productivity of those cows is really low. And a lot of those cows are being handled by pastoralists. And this is not just a case of Nigeria now, it is across Africa where dairy farming has remained more or less on a subsistence level. And this plays a major role in the slow growth of each sector in Africa. Now, how has this long enduring method evolved over time, especially in the recent age of technology and innovation? Okay, so we have a couple of African countries doing very well when it comes to dairy farming. They have developed over time and they have become self-sustainable when it comes to providing or producing locally the milk that is required to be consumed by their population. I would always like to use Kenya as an example. Kenya started from having this huge challenge, the gap between the smallholder dairy farmers and the commercial dairy system. And over time, the country has been able to bridge that gap by infusing technology and innovation in the dairy farming systems, especially at local levels. So for smallholder dairy farmers, Kenya started by first organizing them into groups, strengthening them by providing them with training, capacity building, resources, and also help them to form cooperatives where they formally work as a group to improve on their dairy systems. That's a very good innovation because it has really helped the farmers farmers to understand their needs, to come together as one voice and to advocate for enabling environments at the policy level for improved dairy farming and dairy business in Kenya. On the contrary, in Nigeria, we are still at the early stage of innovation and technology because majority of these farmers are still using the crude method of dairy farming systems and it also directly translates to low productivity and inefficiencies in their dairy businesses. So what Kenya has done differently was first organizing the farmers as formal groups and integrating them into the formal dairy value chain. Kenya has also leveraged on technology in genetics improvement, in taking farmers' record, tracking progresses, coming up with a lot of innovations around the production of milk collection equipment like milk cans. On the contrary, in Nigeria, Nigeria still imports milk cans that would be used by the farmers. Um, Kenya has been able to understand how the process works and builds its own capacity and started building and developing a lot of the tools and equipment required for a sustainable dairy system and dairy businesses. This includes coaching infrastructure, use of data portals in tracking and farmer and process, dairy processor relationship where they take records of what is collected in terms of milk quantity from the farmers, take the record, use that process to pay. They've also been leveraging financial technology where farmers can have access to financial services, um, mobile money systems, and so on. So these are really good innovations that have come up um, in the past few years or past decade in Africa, but some countries, especially in West Africa, are still struggling to catch up with this very fast growth. Thank you, Fisayo, really, for that interesting insight. You know, I particularly like the example of Kenya that you have used. You know, really, apart from the infusion of technology that they have used to grow their dairy system, another key thing that I have noticed that Kenya did for their dairy farmers was to build their capacity. They really invested in building the capacity of their dairy farmers. And this brings me to my next question. Capacity building and proper dairy management have a huge role to play in the growth of the dairy sector. Now, how can African dairy entrepreneurs build their capacity to enable them scale their businesses? 
So when it comes to capacity building for dairy business, I, I believe there are different aspects to this. There is the science of dairy and there's the business of dairy. Every dairy entrepreneur must understand both aspects of dairy entrepreneurship and really look out for how to build their capacity and leverage on available resources to understanding the dynamics of these two aspects of dairy system. So first, um, the science of dairy, there are lots of resources out there. There are resources from Nourishing Africa, Sahel Consulting. There are lots of research institutes doing a lot of work in rolling out contents for the science of dairy. There's the International National Livestock Research Institute, there's National Animal Production Research Institute uh, across Africa. And these platforms can be used to gather resources, to enlighten. You know, there are a lot of platforms that they can take uh, online courses, specifically on improved dairy farming practices, improved milk collection systems, what a milk should compose of, and how to improve the quality of milk through the feed that is provided for the dairy cows, through genetic components, vaccination. So there's a need for a whole lot of understanding of the science of dairy. I believe that this would help any entrepreneur to build their capacity and improve on their dairy management systems. And for the business of dairy, every entrepreneur should have the understanding of business development and market entry and understand the needs of the people, the needs of the African population so that they can tailor their business model to what is actually the gap that needs to be reached, especially long term and even more for long term and compared to short term. So I believe that there are lots of platforms where entrepreneurs can build their capacity independently. They are paid courses and the Netherlands every year have this dairy course that is very robust. It's called Milk into Potentia from Hageningen University and Research. There's always scholarships for African applicants. So this is an opportunity for entrepreneurs to build their capacity to increase and expand their knowledge on dairy systems as well as dairy business. Thank you so much, Visaya, for all of that. I'll try to summarize what you have said for our audience. Now, you have said that the dairy business is divided into the science and the business part. Therefore, dairy entrepreneurs should make sure that they are well conversant with these two areas. And the best way to be conversant with these two areas is to make sure that they leverage resources that have been provided by various platforms, various research institutions, and use these resources to learn how to scale their businesses. This brings me to my next question. What major opportunities and resources are available for entrepreneurs across the African dairy value chain? Okay, I think I've touched on this in previous discussion on capacity building. So there are online platforms, there are agri-business training organized by various bodies, entities across Africa. And most importantly, North Africa houses this information and disseminates to every interested dairy entrepreneur. So first thing I would like to say here, this is not me marketing Nourishing Africa, but for any young entrepreneur that wants to go into the dairy sector, he or she must be registered under Nourishing Africa and keep up to date on every opportunity that Nourishing Africa has for entrepreneurs, because I think that is a very huge platform that entrepreneurs can be updated on where to have access to opportunities and resources. Um, secondly, I'm going to talk about a lot of government interventions and initiatives happening. There's the Anchor Boras program being implemented by the Central Bank of Nigeria, where entrepreneurs can have access to finance, to start their dairy business or to expand or build upon what have started in their dairy businesses. There are also opportunities across the sector when it comes to having access to grants. There are a lot of organizations, uh, MasterCard Foundation and so on, that are providing huge platform for entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs, to have access to grants and build upon or expand on their dairy businesses. I believe they can leverage on all of these and drive their major opportunities from there. Secondly, another opportunity that any entrepreneur in African dairy value chain should look out for right now is technology. We said it earlier, 
technology is becoming indispensable in the world of business today. So there's a lot happening in that space and everybody has the opportunity to make good use of technology and enhance the ability that technology can improve business efficiencies in their various activities. So that's an opportunity also that entrepreneurs can leverage in the African dairy value chain. Thank you so much for that, Visaya. You have mentioned a range of platforms for entrepreneurs to source for funding for their businesses. But in particular, you have highlighted MasterCard Foundation and of course our very own Nourishing Africa. Particularly like how you have emphasized the need for entrepreneurs to incorporate more technology and innovations when doing their businesses. I mean, technology has a way of making things easier, better, and also increasing the quality of products. Thank you once again for that. Now to our next question. What are the key things that entrepreneurs who may be interested in the dairy business or who are looking to expand their existing dairy business know? What key things should they know before going into the business? Okay, for me, one of the major things to understand or to look out for in this sector is policy. So every person going into the dairy business should understand the different policies. So across Africa, we have um, policies tailored to every country in Africa. Understanding the policy that regulates business of dairy in Africa is very, very important for any entrepreneur to know. And identifying the gap in that sector is also something to look out for. So for example, in Nigeria, it is very evident that the gap in the dairy sector is provision of feed for farmers, provision of coaching infrastructure to aid milk aggregation, logistics, um, storage, and conserve milk quality. That is something that entrepreneurs should look out for when it comes to bringing up ideas, coming up with ideas and expanding their dairy businesses. So there are new policies, there are new initiatives coming up every day that they can leverage. Most recently, there's a policy that is encouraging dairy entrepreneurs in Nigeria to backward integrate. So if they are not keeping up with the news, the policies coming up and initiatives, it is very, very difficult to understand which aspects of their business they should expand on and how to really ensure that this is successful. So for me, it is policy primarily, and then understand the market dynamics, understand the needs of the people, understand the challenges that are currently faced across the value chain and the opportunity that you can tap into at every point of the value chain from production to aggregation, processing, and even distribution and marketing. So look out for every policies that affect this value chain and tap into the opportunity. Expand your daily businesses according to what the needs of the market is and what gap needs to be bridged or to be closed up. Interesting. Very interesting insights, Fisayo. Basic things that entrepreneurs who are trying to join the dairy business should know are policies. Be sure to always check out the policies going on in the sector and also do your research so that you know what opportunities you're feeling and how you can expand your business in that landscape. Now, this brings us to our final question, Fisayo. The demand for milk in Africa is growing especially with the continent's consistent population's growth and increased need for nutritious food. How can the African dairy sector match up with these demands? And what role does the major stakeholders have to play? Yeah, Africa's population is rapidly growing and food will always be a staple. I used to always say this, that the business of food will never be not lucrative. And it is important for us to work towards providing nutritious food for Africa. We need to be self-sufficient. And the goal is to be primary producers or the major producers of food across the world by 2050. So it is important for any dairy entrepreneur in this space to understand that the business of food is not just a means to make money, but it is a point to promote food security and to uh, improve livelihoods of human beings generally and to preserve climate. And these are all the factors that we need to look into when it comes to matching up with the demands of nutritious foods and what major stakeholders have to play. First, for the 
entrepreneurs, the major role that any entrepreneur has to play in this sector is to continue to come up with innovative ideas, innovative um, systems and structures to increase the efficiency of food production generally, and particularly dairy, where we are talking about today. So every entrepreneur has that major role to play in continuous learning, continuous innovation. And that would be a primary responsibility for any entrepreneur in this space. Another major stakeholder in this space would be the government. So what have other countries, developed countries, done differently? What have they done over the years? India is one of the highest producers of milk in the world and highest exporters of milk in the world. What have they done? They started from somewhere. They didn't just sleep and wake up one day and started producing these very high quantities of milk that would cater for the country and as well as other countries that are in need of it. So what have they done differently in terms of policies, in terms of supporting businesses, especially at small to medium scales, in terms of improving on the system or farming system of dairy, how have they supported producers, how have they supported processors, how have these countries supported even consumers, how have they supported the increased consumption of milk or the increased demand of these healthy products. So the governments need to work with private sector consultants, experts in the space to understand these dynamics and leverage on those lessons to come up with a very robust policy that enables um, um, local dairy sourcing in Africa. And um, this would primarily just help the dairy entrepreneurs to easily come up with their innovative ideas because if they are boxed up or they are restricted in the things that they can do or they have limited access to um, some resources that they require for their innovation and even funding, it will be very difficult for these entrepreneurs to achieve what I've mentioned as their primary responsibility. Then we look at the private sectors. What is currently happening in the space? What are investors thinking about agribusiness? I, I, I strongly believe that there are a lot of opportunities in investing in dairy, in the dairy sector, and improving the efficiency, improving the productivity, and increasing the access and availability of dairy products to every African. And over time, this would tremendously provide the opportunity to support and boost Africa's economy and not just Africa's nutrition. It's going to also boost Africa's economy. So investors should also look out for more opportunities in investing in dairy sectors. There are a lot of gaps, as I mentioned. There are gaps in production systems. There are gaps in storage, processing, and even distribution of dairy products. Dairy is highly perishable, and it is a very, very, very important source of nutrition for every kind of people. And we they can always use that opportunity to identify investment um, opportunities and invest in the dairy sector. We also have research institutes. What are they doing in terms of rolling out information, rolling out data that is useful for all of the stakeholders, including the government and the entrepreneurs and investors. So we need research institutes. We need academia to continue to provide very reasonable and quality information for African entrepreneurs and African governments and investors and other key stakeholders in this space to leverage upon. We also have donors that are funding development programs, such of which is we have the East African Dairy Development Program, we have Advancing Local Dairy Development in Nigeria. And these are also opportunities to develop the sector, especially from the grassroots, from the smallholder farmers, from where they are in that need of improved farming systems, increased access to um, resources, increased access to finance. Financial institutions also have a huge role to play in um, matching up the demand of dairy sector because with increased financial services, with increased access to credits, there will be increased businesses, increased productivity and provision of just dairy products to the African population. Thank you so much, Fisaya, for that. Now, with all you have said, I am sure that we all agree that there is a need for an all-hands-on-deck approach to the development of Africa's dairy sector, starting from the entrepreneurs who have to come up with innovative ideas and solutions to improve their businesses and, in the long run, the sector in general, 
the government will have to look into how other countries are, are improving their policies and how they are supporting the entrepreneurs and their citizens in the consumption of, and production of dairy products. The private sector and investors who have to remain active in the sector, bringing in funding and other opportunities to entrepreneurs. And finally, for the research institutions, continue producing quality data. Now, a combination of all of these things, I'm sure, will take our African dairy sector to the next level. Thank you so much, Pisayo, for coming on this podcast. Thank you very much, and I'm honored to lend my voice in this platform. Thank you very much for providing this opportunity. There you have it, our dear listeners. We have come to the end of another wonderful Nourish in Africa podcast episode. And on to the next episode, do have a lovely time. Bye-bye.